I think that'll work. Welcome, Knowledge Chain students. Today we are having a class on all things Avalanche. Uh, layer 1 blockchain competitor to Ethereum has some really cool tech behind it, some really cool history. Our professor, Happy Meal, will yeah. be sharing his screen and working alongside us as we learn to use Avalanche. Take it away, Happy Meal. All right, it's Happy Meal coming from the main streets of Brooklyn, New York. Um, similar to Django Lake Jones, I didn't let this uh, this this name go past I, i've had it my whole life i don't know why i was called happy meal when i was a kid but i'm gonna keep going with it um probably because i was smiling all the time anyway avalanche is one of the major chains that are away from ethereum now you know phantom polygon matic uh uh avalanche uh as solana these are chains that are really like at the top of the of the food chain uh, Polkadot is, is its also own chain, but Avalanche is is ahead of a lot of others because of its total value locked and its market cap and the fact that there's a lot of dApps on it, a lot. We'll talk about all of that. So this particular chain is very good for, for finance, de for DeFi, for decentralized finance. Why, right? Well, this is the guy who founded it. He's actually part of Cornell University's faculty. His name is Emin Gunsirer. He founded Ava Labs. It's a nonprofit, I believe. Uh, Avalanche Labs, Ava Labs, and he uh, wanted to ex go past what is already existing in the market. Meaning, his idea was to create a coin that was very finance friendly. Now, Anderson Horowitz, which is a huge, huge uh, money pit. Uh, they, they, I mean, they have. They're like. A, I'm not sure if they're a hedge fund or. Uh, they just they invest. They they invest a lot. They're they're angel investors, and they uh, brought him enough money to get this project off the ground. Now, uh, these people who initialized capital, Balaji Srinivasan, Naval Ravikant, all of them have invested a lot of money into this project. That's just to name a few. He's got partners, of course, but uh, what he wanted to do was bring the next gen in. So Bitcoin was the first gen, right? Then there was Ethereum, third was ADA, and fourth is AVAX. Now, why are these three, what makes them, you know, prior generations? Well, Bitcoin was the first to be a decentralized currency. We know how it works. It's good for cross-border payments. It's quick, but not lightning quick. Um, it's based on validations and node validations. Ethereum is based on uh, the same kind of technology, except it, de it developed an infrastructure for other coins as well. Ada came around and theoretically it is the third generation. However, it wasn't totally what what they were talking about is hypothetical and the way it runs uh, It's still up in the air like there's not a hundred percent They they haven't descri described it or disclosed exactly why it's the third place third generation But it is in the, in certain circles. They call it the third generation fourth generation meaning the latest is Avalanche because it's based on something called meta stable consensus mechanisms. Now, this stuff is very interesting because it's not like there needs to be super validation. Like Bitcoin and Ethereum need to validate on the network. They need to. Uh, they won't pr process transactions without validation. And here we're talking about consens consensus mechanisms that don't require the network to totally validate anything. I mean, what we're doing is, as long as there's, there's always a little play in the line, and that's okay. As long as there's certain, you know, amount of nodes that are, that are willing to, that, uh, that are, that, that have a consensus. It's not all of them. So what happens here, it means that it's the speed at which transactions are finalized is much faster. We're talking about two seconds or less for a, a transaction to finish uh, validation. I mean, and this is safely. We're talking about securely and safely. So, I mean, the, the, you know, this is, this is crazy speeds. You know, Bitcoin needs 60 minutes to validate a transaction. Ethereum is around 10%, you know, 10% of that at six minutes. This is two seconds, lightning fast. So that's the, really the, the claim to fame for Avalanche. Uh, and it's going to help when you're talking about uh, high frequency trading, especially in the decentralized finance and 
you know, liquidity pools and all of that, it's a great place to to make money. Uh, the faster you move around in the finance world, the fa the more you can make, especially with our, our uh, arbitrage. There's currently about 300 plus DAPs on the chain. So uh, they are Ethereum, um, they, they work with Ethereum. So, you know, we're talking about apps like Aave, which both have a footprint on Ethereum and in AVAX. Uh, so, I mean, in Avalanche. If Aave is huge, I'm sure everybody's heard of that. Um, and Avalanche is just, uh, Aave is just one of, of many, many, many more. Um, we'll talk about that for sure. Uh, there is a lot of money uh, on this chain already, about 10 billion bucks. Uh, roughly greater than 10 billion and the, the fees are great the fees are okay they're getting higher and higher but but the fees are still significantly cheaper you know we're talking about a dollar versus you know the gas fee of fifty dollars uh, on on <laughs> on a, at a good time uh, in ethereum when whenever a lot of people are transacting you know so avex is cheaper to run on and it's faster so here's where it gets a little tricky now this is why AVAX ha is kind of strange. Now, there's three chains on AVAX. There is the X chain. It's the exchange chain, which is an, it's an instance of the Avalanche virtual machine. Um, Ethereum virtual machine is how the EVM and is, is, is the Ethereum virtual machine. And that works to allow contracts to talk to each other uh, on the Ethereum network. Now, the, the, this is the same thing that's going on on AVAC, uh, on, uh, on Avalanche, but they call it the Avalanche Virtual Machine. Uh, it, can, it can only talk to other Avalanche, um, on the, uh, other Avalanche contracts on the Avalanche network. Uh, it allows clients to, tr to create and trade assets on the X chain and other instances of the AVM. It cannot be used with MetaMask. Um, it is absolutely different from the 0x style wallet that everybody's used to but it's great for transferring of funds uh it's fast lightning fast and super cheap so if you were if you have a avalanche wallet which is not i'm not talking about metamask just avalanche you are able to transfer money from one avalanche wallet to another quick and cheap uh so moving forward from there is the peaching the platform chain is the metadata blockchain on Avalanche and it coordinates validators, keeps track of active subnets and enables the creation of new subnets. Staking happens here. Uh, nodes get validated here. Avalanche is a proof of stake and not a proof of work uh, um, platform. So we are, you know, eco-friendly here with Avalanche. We're not, you know, going crazy with energy costs or anything like that. But proof of stake does happen on the on the net, and this is where it is a platform chain. The third one is the contract chain. Contract chain is to interact with Ethereum virtual machine. So everything outside of AVAX goes through the C chain. When we're going to set up a MetaMask wallet, which I'll show everyone how to do, that's going to be using the C chain. The problem here is sometimes if you're using like QCoin or something, I think it's actually changed now where they they will pick up the detail for you and make sure that you're only sending to teaching. Because if you don't and if you have money and you're trying to transfer it out of QCoin or some other uh, centralized exchange, it's going to disappear if you try to send it to any chain other than the C chain. Can you uh, hone in on it, that for it, a second? It, so if, yeah, if, sure. If I have some AVAX that I'm going to be sending out tonight to out. some uh, lucky person. Um, which which chain should I be using? Only use the C chain unless otherwise specified. If they have an Avalanche wallet through Ava Labs, which I'll show at the end, they can you you can use the X chain. But and you'll save gas. But if they have a MetaMask wallet, do not even think about it. Only on the C chain. Because the avalanche you'll be sending is actually on the Ethereum chain. It's not on the AVAX chain. So, moving forward, uh, we have how to add, well, so how we add C chain to MetaMask. So, uh, we, let's just take a look at MetaMask for a second. Right, here's MetaMask. You just open this bad boy up here, which you should be on the Ethereum mainnet, right? You add the network. If you don't have that option, 
then I believe you're going to have to go, if you don't have the add network option there, you might have to go into here and go to settings and Sorry, experimental. Let me, let's, just, let's just back up one moment before we do this, just because I see Tahiti, if you've got questions, feel free to ask. But basically, what? just to recap real quick, we've got three different chains all within Avalanche. They all have three Correct. separate separate kind of things for them. The first one is the X chain that is not ETH compatible. No. This is like the main nope. chain for Avalanche just for Avalanche. Then you've got the P chain, which is just for the platform chain, which is just for uh, the validators. That's just their right. kind of consensus mechanism hub. Then the most commonly used one, the one that people use the most, is the C chain, which is EVM compatible, Ethereum virtual machine compatible, and you're actually sending your AVAX on Ethereum. Uh, so you're going to pay a little bit higher in gas fees, but you can send ERC-20 tokens, you can send NFTs, you can use dApps within the Ethereum ecosystem. So what Avalanche has done is they've created their own chain that works just for them, has low transaction fees, really great, but also they want to allow everybody that's used to Ethereum, that's used to the biggest name in the space to... Uh, still be able to transact on Ethereum. So mostly, yeah, C-Chain is used because it works on the Ethereum network, correct? Right, Excellent. Sorry, Thank you very interrupt. much, Sean. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. I appreciate that. Uh, we, we should have spent a few more minutes on that. The other thing is that, yes, a lot of the dApps that are, uh, that are found on Avalanche uh, at all, that have footprints elsewhere, like in Ethereum or you know, um, or, or Salon or anywhere else, they will be found at the C chain as well. Like Ave, AAVE, they need to, you know, they need to communicate with other, uh, other instances of themselves on other chains. So they're going to, they're usually going to be home. Uh, this is their home, the C chain. Um, all right. So going forward from there, right. Can we, uh, let's, let's, let's show you how to do, let's ha let's ha let's add Avalanche to MetaMask. Let's add C chain to MetaMask. So again, if you don't have add network down here, which I think some people don't, you can just go to your settings, right? Go here, click settings and go to networks and you can add network from here. So everybody see that hopefully. When you do add your network, you're just gonna put the network name, which is Avalanche Network. These, these are all found on Avalanche's website, and we can share them uh, if you need to. They are pretty simple and, uh, and, and self-explanatory. Put the RPC URL in here. The chain ID is 43114, and the symbol is AVAX. And then the block explorer is snowtrace.io. Okay, that is just for MetaMask. Now... This is this is what this is AVAX's wallet. Now well, let's, in MetaMask let's, again. Let's, let's sorry, sorry, happy. Let's slow down. Can you show that screen again? We can have everybody uh, import the C chain into their MetaMask uh, using that different RPC and all that information. Go ahead, plug that in. Um, I will type it out in chat so you can copy and paste it. Yeah, let's go ahead and take our time, and we can. Uh, yeah, let's let's slow down. I'm moving fast because I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> let's move a little slower here. So here's the actual. Yeah, let's do it like that. And the, the network name is Avalanche Network. The chain ID is four three one one four. Symbol is AVAX. So that's the currency symbol, right? And just to give a little deeper button. dive while you guys type that information in, an RPC is a um, – how do you think of an RPC? It's like the telephone line, the individual telephone line that the API that you're using to connect your wallet to the chain. Um, so there are a bunch of different RPCs that you can use. In fact, you can even make your own one. Um, we can – we'll have a whole class on – the importance of using correct RPCs. 
for now, using the most popular one is fine. Nice. Surfing Cowboys got it in. You are Beautiful. Now officially uh, registered for the AVAX giveaway at the end of class. You have to post proof that you have AVAX in your MetaMask, added to your MetaMask wallet, in order to receive tonight's giveaway, by the way. Jangles got it. Ooh, he's got it in his ledger, too. Let's see if I can access my wallet. While you guys are doing this together, I want to make sure that I show you the difference between the wallets. Quickly. I haven't accessed this wallet in quite some time. It's probably nothing in here. Oh, look at that. There's something in here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how much more complicated it is. Let's let we'll we'll get back to this in a little bit. But let's let's make sure everybody's first puts their meta mask together. Nice, and see how he's got it in his MetaMask now. He can switch. Can you show that again? You can switch oh, between yes. the, the different chains there right in your MetaMask. If you go to the top uh, where it says Ethereum Network or Ethereum Mainnet, you can switch between all the different chains you've added. And we're going to switch to the... the uh, yep, once you set it up in there, it's a one-time thing. You'll never need to do it again. And then if you don't find, let's say you have a coin off of the site, uh, off of, uh, let's say on Trader Joe or something, you buy a coin and you don't find it here, you can always import the token as you would on Ethereum as well. Trader Joe is definitely, we're going to talk about that too. That's, that's an interesting place where you would buy. Well, that's actually the next slide. So when everybody's ready, we can... Continue. What's wrong, Tahiti? Tell us. Uh, tell us any questions in chat. Do you need us to put up the the information again? Can you go to the uh, RPC and and um. I can see my network on my laptop, but not on my phone. MetaMask app. Oh, you have to add that. It's separated. You can't. They're not connect. They're not interconnected that way. You'll have to add it on your phone as well. Yep, you have to do them. Um, yeah, every time that you update MetaMask, it's uh, local. So you need to add on every device that you're going to have your MetaMask on. MetaMask does not store anything on your on the cloud or anything like that. So it doesn't just automatically transfer different information between your accounts. All right, cool. Cool. Anybody right. else want to uh, add it? Nice, Tahiti. All right, I'll put your name in the giveaway. Yep. All right, I've got Surfin, Jangle, Matthew, and Tahiti in the giveaway. If Vatarax or Peter, if you want to... Um, uh, add that later. Just feel free to post in chat and I'll add your name to the giveaway. Let's move on. All right. So before we go into Trader Joe and talk about how it's just another DAX, let's take a look at Avalanche itself. It has been on a free fall lately. Uh, there was an all-time high of 144 in November where everything had its all-time high. But in the last 30 days, it went from practically $80 down to 40, what are we, 45.77. I mean, it's gotten really, really, uh, it took a tumble. Uh, th this is a good time to buy, in my opinion. <laughs> That's this, just the degen in me talking. You guys do your own research, obviously. 
But the market cap is 11 billion. Trading volume is over a billion. Uh, you're, if you keep an eye on it and you look for a floor or you look for an entry point that's comfortable for you, there is a great amount of upside to Avalanche. Again, this is this is the this is the Avax coin that is at the very root of this whole chain that is not going anywhere. You know, they have a lot of things going on in the chain. If you look at you know, at Trader Joe, so you would just go to TraderJoe.xyz, right? This is this is the uh, decentralized exchange that you will find uh, that hosts Avalanche. Uh, you search for any symbol, let's say AVAX, you know, we'll go into AVAX itself. So you'll go to the screen where you'll find AVAX. Um, let's say I have my Thor here, I want to transfer it to... AVAX. It's, it's it's very similar to Sushi. It's very, it's very similar to Pancake Swap. They all work in a very similar way. Um, just remember that it's TraderJoeXYZ.com and nothing else. Uh, they have pools here, uh, the liquidity pools. If you have you know a lot of capital you want to distribute, you can get a decent, very decent APR on some of these things. Seventy percent APR. It's not too shabby. Uh, USDC E and AVAX liquidity pool is also 88% paying out a year, which is, I mean, it's pretty decent. Uh, you can farm here. Uh, you can uh, you can lend. Uh, maybe not in America. Uh, in some parts of America, you might be able to get away with this, but in some, in, even at some point, you, I mean, you can stake. Uh, you can stake on here too. X Joe, you get if you have Joe. Joe is the currency for trader joe it's trader joe's currency so if you had joe you stake it you get x joe uh that there's so many different things you can do on trader joe uh and it's, it's trustworthy it's a good place to to park some money now continuing that uh, so we spoke about a little bit about trader joe uh no, there's there are places you can buy Avalanche off of decentralized exchanges. Uh, I'm sure Qcoin and a, a lot of other ones have it. Uh, Binance, I don't know if has it. Uh, let's you can even take a look and see who has it. I like CoinGecko for that. You can see what markets there are. I mean, it's just no end to it. You have FTX, Gate.io, Coinbase has it. This is not a small coin by any by any stretch of the imagination. It's a it's a blue chip. I would dare say it's close to blue chip. It's it's getting there. If you're in Coinbase, you're already not you, you're not. It's not a joke anymore. Finance, um, will be. So Bitstamp, my one of my favorite places to buy coins. Qcoin. Yep. Okay. So it's not a it's not a little coin. So that's just uh, that Trader Joe for you in a nutshell. Um, if we want we might want to dive deeper into what we can do with with avalanche later but for now let's just skim the surface because there's a lot to talk about let's get into the elephant in the room um i'm not sure who else was part of this crazy house but i was and i'm not ashamed to admit it um the whole idea before behind wonderland which was uh, one of the coins on the Avalanche network uh, was that we were all going to make it, right? Wag me. We all got greedy. We all thought we were going to the, the market. There was no downside to the market. This coin just kept going and going. I invested only 500 bucks, so I'm not going to scream and holler. But there are people who were wiped out. And I'm not joking when I say wiped out. They put all of their life savings into it, and it's gone. Why? How did that happen? Well, we know what happens in this world, don't we? This is a this is pretty gambling sort of world that we're in. But this particular project showed so much promise. I mean, who wouldn't trust this guy? You know, <laughs> look how trustworthy he looks. I mean, come on. Everybody just wants to give him a hug. But Daniel Tesla did make a few promises. One of the promises he made was that the APY... For you staking your Wonderland token, you'd get uh, you'd stake time, and you'd get memo. I believe that's what it was. And memo's APY was an ins insane amount. 
Um, and that's why everybody got greedy and that's why everybody got into this project. So at the end of the day, there is a lesson here. It's if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Uh, you know, there the some people did pull out what happened, why? No, basically what what the you know what Sean said earlier is that game theory was behind this. And those that don't totally understand game theory, it's it's an, it's a decision making process where the outcome for each participant depends on the actions of all. So we were all going to leave our coins in there to stake all the money that was supposed to be in uh, and the, what happened was uh, it, it, Daniel started going and using he wanted to use that money to buy sushi he was going to turn su uh, you know sushi into a pet project for Wonderland uh, and what happened was that that was just as soon as that happened it seemed like some people were confused and this guy showed up out of the blue his name is Omar Denani, okay, and his uh, his Discord name was Sifu, S-I-F-U. He was one of the moderators in the Discord for Wonderland. It got outed that he was... Uh, Omar Denani went to jail. He was a felon. He's a felon, and he stole a lot of money. He was in fraud for over two decades or so. He's, he loves to steal money. So he changed his name to Michael Patron, and I believe he moved to Canada... And then he was behind the Quadriga CX craziness, which if everybody knows what Quadriga CX is, it's a Canadian exchange that lost hundreds of millions of dollars. And somehow he had his hands in it. Now this just drove Wonderland mad. Once we realized that this schmuck had his hands on our money, everybody wanted to jump ship. I mean, there's no way out, except there was one door and everybody was trying to get through it. I remember trying to sell my memo, and I'm looking at it as it just keeps free falling, and I can't get out because liquid wasn't just there. I mean, it was illiquid at one point. You couldn't, you just couldn't exit. It, the people who could exit, they got out by just, you know, ramming the the mouse click button as many times as they could. Just uh, eventually, they got through, but there were too many people looking for the door, and at the end of the day, that door, the hole was very small. And a lot of people are still probably holding the bag. You know how I know this? Because the the price is not zero. Which means that not everybody cashed out. And some people may be waiting for it to come back. I don't see it happening. Now let's take a look at what, what Wonderland was. The price was almost nine. It was over nine grand a token. Just think about that, guys. Ten grand. Look at that. Ten thousand dollars a token, okay. I got in. It was a few grand, I think. I didn't buy one full, or it was two grand or something. Uh, maybe I got in around here in December, and it just it went up a little bit. And this is where Daniel started talking about let's buy sushi, let's buy the DX decks from there, and, and then it started. And then Patron was outed that he was part of the conspiracy part, part of the Discord. Then somebody pulled a lot of money out, and I think it was tied to Sifu. Uh, and then it just started careening downwards from there. Now, why do I mention this project? Because even during this time, I was looking at Avalanche, and it did not take a beating. Meaning, the, the, the authenticity, the, the genuineness of Avalanche had nothing to do with Wonderland, I thought that they were tied together. I thought there was, you know, this was the end of the chain. It was still, it's still a young chain, but no, Avalanche prospered after that. So, the end of the day, you know, if, if you find that one of your moderators is a felon that changed his name, run, don't walk, run from the project. This is why doxing is so freaking important. Doxed people are usually willing to. Talk about the issues that happen in their lives, not hide them from unsuspecting investors. And so, even to this day, I'm just surprised this has some kind of value still, you know. When, but it was at ten thousand, so it's a scary, it's a scary, it's a scary topic. But we we did have to cover that a little bit. Um, this is just I forgot I had this slide. I thought I would show you live anyway. Uh, at the end of the day, maybe it will come back. I mean, I'm still in the Discord. I'm still... I think it's... No, I was in the Discord until recently. I'm not anymore. Uh, Sifu was voted out. 
uh, there was a vote, and he was voted out, but not not fast enough. And and even so, Daniel himself has lost all credibility because he pretended like he didn't know that the, this guy was a two-time felon or whatever the case may be. And you know what? I mean, look, there's one thing: if you're if you're if you're if you made mistakes in your life, okay, you have to come clear with them right away. You can't be involved with other people's money if you've already been caught stealing money before. You know, there's just no way you can't. You can do anything but that, but you can't do that. So, Daniel, if you ever see this guy's face again, give him a friendly punch in the mouth for me. Thanks. <laughs> um, there are a lot of legitimate projects still on Avalanche. Uh, this is a uh, look at uh, Yield Yak. Dot com yield yak is similar to trader joe um they also have liquidity pools these are boosted these are joe farms um uh meaning you'll take your there's there's a way to take unstake uh, you stake your joe you get ve joe instead of x joe you get ve joe you stake it here you could probably use that ve joe somewhere else as well excuse me um one more thing, let's actually come back to, let's go back to Wonderland for one more second. Um, I, I forgot to mention this to you guys. There is not a slide on this, but he designed something called Magic Internet Money. Um, and there was a MIM, which means you could have borrowed, the Magic Internet Money was a loan that you would have gotten against your uh, staked memo. So if you staked your memo, your time, and you got $10,000 you staked it there, you can borrow money against that. That was a revolutionary concept at the time, I think. Uh, it predated all of the new loan systems that we have on, on DeFi now. But people were able to borrow money against their stake, spend that money. Of course, they were they could have been a margin called at any time. Uh, and they would have lost their initial investment if the market dictates that it, you know, if market conditions were to go down there was you know you would lose your you would lose some of, or all of your investment but at the height it sounded like a great idea you would borrow there would be no tax liability uh and you'd be able to keep your stake at the same time and if you pay it back or if the coin just keeps going up then you didn't really even have to you know the money would it would resolve itself they take a piece of that or you pay it back from from the uh from the future gains um, MIM is still around. I, I don't. I don't know. I got to dig a little deeper into that. But it was an interesting concept. This is so. This is Yield Yak. This is just one of of uh, Trader Joe's. Another place where there's plenty of DeFi projects, uh, liquidity pools, or staking. Uh, there's also Ave. Ave is a terrific place uh, to to put your money into. Uh, you can lock your liquidity here. Twenty one billion dollars of liquidity across seven networks, including Avalanche. Um, Aave is, is, a, is a, you know, they're, you can, if you can't trust Aave, I don't know who you could trust at this point. Uh, they're stable as it gets, uh, almost as stable as stable coins. But the interest isn't great. Aave's interest is kind of low, if you ask me. I think it's under 10%, which, see, this is the problem. When you want to chase that, uh, and I haven't up chasing it i'm sorry but i'm still chasing that passive income strategy where i'm gonna get more than 10 percent on my money um and that's that 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 is you know the gambler in me i guess hoping that one of these projects will pay off more than 10 percent of my money there's another place that is a marketplace on uh for nfts that is uh, on avalanche it's called kalayo.io marketplace.kalayo.io is a place you can find um nfts for sale uh you can even see here it looks like banksy uh some kind of uh part of his connect collection 100 particles for sale only to whitelisted klo holders well you were able to get in there with kalayo so uh, actually, i'm sure that i'll actually mm -hmm. just interrupt for one more time so um if you guys want to go to uh i'll actually post it in chat marketplace.kalayo.com um, I'll post it in chat. And if you would find for me one NFT within that marketplace that you like, um, I was going to buy an NFT tonight and then, uh, give it out, but we're going to see what kind of, uh, traction we have. But just to talk about the Banksy one, uh, that is a Banksy original. Uh, it's called love is in the air and it was purchased by the particle NFT project. 
and then mm-hmm. each NFT is one. Uh, I believe it's one one hundredth. Yes, it's one one hundredth of the actual stencil itself. So you own a very small square. You can see them all right there. Yep. You own a very small square of an original Banksy piece. uh, And you, as a community, you all own... um, Nice. (laughs) Surfing Cowboy likes the snail NFT. I have no idea what that project is about, but that's a cute little snail with a Death Star on its back. Very interesting. They they are, I assume, the the leader in in NFTs uh, on a, on the Avalanche chain. Um, I'd have to assume that because of the fact that they have a lot going on here. Snail Star says Matthew. I love that. Yeah, go ahead, guys, and check out Cleo.io. Uh, just like uh, OpenSea runs, just like OpenSea, just like um. um an, a normal NFT marketplace, but it's just for AVAX stuff. Snail Star Destroyer of Worlds. <laughs> that one right there, what were you just looking at? That's one of the most popular projects on AVAX. The Firat NFTs. Um, huh. I believe they have the mm-hmm. highest market cap, if I'm not wrong. The or highest, floor volume price is- highest volume traded. Uh huh. Woof. That's a lot. Yeah. Okay. This project seems to be doing very well. Uh, floor price is about 150 bucks, roughly. Uh, and uh, the art's not bad. I wonder what the utility is like. Mm. I believe it's something about how the uh, it's like a um, storyline that follows that character. Um, I think through outer space. But it's, uh-huh. it's, uh, it's a book series. But I think this is the most popular. This would be like the Bored Apes of the Avalanche Network. I see. Excellent. Very cool stuff. And I'm big into NFTs as well. Um, we can, you know, we'll discuss that at another time. Um, I've mostly only bought anything on Solana and... Uh, and Ethereum, but I, I, I'm looking to expand into others, especially during this bear market. Um, I let's talk about it. Uh, so we've talked about Wonderland, we've talked about Avalanche, we've touched on Trader Joe, and I wanted to also discuss just a little bit of what I'm in. Uh, the two projects we'll touch on. It's it's nothing crazy. So Thor. Which is a uh, also a project that's uh, nodes as a service. It's similar to this strong the idea that you know you stake you you pay a certain amount to get in and you stake it uh, and it's it, it was at one point in December at five hundred dollars a pop. So right now it's clearly much much less. And I got in close to what it is now. Uh, I recently just got in. Um, because I looked at the roadmap and I kind of like where it's going. So uh, it might it might go somewhere. It might not. Uh, I'm not. You know, I wasn't one of those people who went balls to the wall and started. You know, at the five hundred dollar mark. There are some upset people, of course. Um, I think I'm gonna go to the other one to show uh, how much you can possibly get here. So I have. Uh, there are four different ways to make money here. You need to have. You can have uh, one of these, which only costs, you know, one Thor is, like I said, like one Thor is about $6. So, you know, what is this? Like less than no, 1.2 Thor. It's nothing. Uh, but you're not making much either. You're only earning, you know, a thousandth, of, almost eight, eight thousandths of a Thor daily. This one requires six Thor. So six is about $36 or so to get in. This one's uh, twice that. Uh, at uh, you know seventy two dollars, this one is almost eighty Thor, but you're earning a Thor a day. So I got one of each. Now, at the end of the day, I'm getting. Th- I already got three Thor here because I just claimed recently, I claimed four days ago, all of these. This one I claimed two months ago because it's just it's so slow. It's growing and growing, but it's just there's nothing there yet. I don't want to even claim it without. If I wanted to claim this right now. I'd pay 
it's 0 0.02 AVAX. So I would see, let's say, what is AVAX? One is $50. So one tenth of that is going to be $5. This would be about 50 cents, something like that to claim, to claim this, which is not bad. Really, it's not bad. Let's talk about gas. Because before I forget, this is very important. Um, gas, cheaper, like I said, on AVAX. It's not at all close to Ethereum. Uh, even in the highest of the highs, you're not going to get a lot of gas fees. But if you ever see gas fees higher than 100, you wait on your transaction. There is a very big gas sucker in Avalanche, and that's called Krabada. Krabada. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's a game. Constantly burning gas. Uh, and it is the biggest gas-hungry uh, dap there is on Avalanche. And sometimes people are going crazy there. So you'll see gas go up to about 100. And you want to avoid it. This gas coin, this coin tool app, this little gas tracker is a really cool way of finding gas prices I found over over time. If you mean over time. If you don't want to go every time to, to you know, check gas prices and you can decode the numbers it's not bad. It's actually pretty good. So you see how, look at the Ethereum's gas at fast. It's $1.90, let's say, for some specified amount. AVAX, we're looking at six cents, you know, for a specified amount. These numbers are so far apart, you know, it's it's insane. Phantom also is cheap, as you can see. It's, it's even cheaper than uh, AVAX by tenfold. Um, but AVEX is, is again, it's you know it's much cheaper than Ethereum. That's what we're comparing it now. So, you know, if you keep if the gas is if if the gas is low, meaning if it's under hundred, if it's seventy five or less, then it's it's good to claim your rewards or pay any fees that might be outstanding for stuff like this or buy trade, you know, whatever it is. Don't don't uh, don't do it when it's too high. Uh, so anything I claim, regardless of the price, if I wanted to claim these three doors right now, it would be still roughly the same amount. So about right, 50 cents or so. It's nothing crazy. Tahiti wants to know uh, if you can edit the AVAX GUE, which it's not called GUE on AVAX. It's just a smaller denomination of AVAX. Um, so it's just called gas on AVAX. But um, can you edit the gas on the AVAX network? Um, yes, you can, just like you could, same exact process for Ethereum. You're just going to go to the edit gas, and you can pick fast, slow, or medium transactions. There really is no point to do this on the AVAX network, though, because it's so cheap, you're saving fractions of a penny. In fact, I would rather just spend the extra penny just to have it done that much faster. We're talking two-second transaction finality, so it's super fast super cheap um there really is no need to try to penny pinch when it comes to the gas um but yeah just to let you guys know uh way and gway are just terms for ethereum those those are just terms for ethereum solana gas is paid in soul avax gas is paid in avax bitcoin gas it's not called gas it's just called transaction fees but is paid in uh, oh. uh, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you did mention that uh, because it's not only that uh, it doesn't it doesn't pay to pinch pennies here, but if you try to do it slow, you'll likely lose whatever you paid. Uh, you know the smart contracts run on gas, and if you don't pay the amount, you know if you if you end up trying to be uh, stingy a little, which you know it's fine, but you'll lose that. You might lose that, and you won't get your transaction. It'll be reverted, and you'll lose the gas. So, what generally what it is is like if, if you could pay high, you always want to because at least you'll be unsure, almost assured of your, you know, of, of the transaction going through. Uh, miners don't, you know, they 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 set they set their level. If someone's going to pay a little more than you, then they'll they'll take the, they'll get the transaction run faster than you, and also you'll waste your gas money, and, and you won't even get your transaction. So. That's something to consider on any chain. Am I right about that? I think I think I'm correct about that. Yeah. Um, and uh, and we're actually going to go over. I'm going to um, possibly on Friday, but uh, maybe later. I will show you guys um, some visual representations of 
what actually the transaction fees are. Um, there's some really good dApps out there that just show you exactly what's happening on chain in real time um, using some different kind of visualizations so that we can really get a good understanding of what that gas fee is, where it's going, and what we're doing when we're setting our gas lower um, than what is recommended. Um, and essentially we're just going to, uh, if we imagine like a train, we're not going to the first car in the train, we're going back down to the less busy one um, down at the end of the train where there's more space and more room. And as the train slowly pulls up one at a time, each block in there, you know, in this analogy, the block is the car of the train. Each block is um, ver validated. It moves down the track and the next block comes up. And now that's the first block. But you're already in there because you've already paid that gas. So you've already paid your entrance ticket to get on the train. You just did it a while ago and got on the back of the train instead. We'll go over that kind of stuff. Um, I'll make it very, very clear. I know some of this can be very confusing for new people. Exactly what I'm talking about, Jangle Leg knows his stuff. It's a little South Park animation. You can even see actual NFTs. Um, and I think Bored Apes, Azuki, and one other have actually partnered with uh, Transaction Street. Yeah, it's, it's freaking awesome. And not only that, but you, like, you can... It, it's, it's better than most YouTube channels out there. <laughs> Just sit there and watch what's happening on chain <laughs> if you're nerdy like I am. <laughs> but So quickly, just let's I'll finish up with Thor. The reason I'm still here is because any of these projects that, that you stake and you get something back for, uh, there's taxes involved, there's fees. The taxes, if you sell it, if you sell, if you, I mean, I'm sorry, if you claim, there's a claim tax. Right now, the claim tax is 50%. Wow. I'll lose half of my money if I claim right now. Why? Because they are they don't want you to claim so often. They want you to claim every so often, about every month, let's say. This one I claimed two months ago, the tax is only 1%. So after about any, like, something about 28 days later, I'll have, uh, depending on the tier, so this is the highest, highest tier, it's still going to be a 10% or a 20% tax. This is going to be 5%, this is going to be 10%, this is going to be 20%. So the, that money, what they collect, that goes back into a pool for everyone. And then they buy investments with that. Uh, they, they invested in, uh, I believe they bought Curve last time, uh, which is a terrific investment for governance sakes. Uh, then they can leave. They, they're buying protocols that are, they're buying money, uh, they're buying other coins with the money that they're getting from users for tax which is going to build the, the, the make the token richer in the future anyway. Uh, there's a monthly fee involved in running one of these nodes. It's obviously super cheap if you only have the one that gets you 8,000 a day. It's going to cost you, I don't know, 50 cents, right? Versus the big one, which I'm, you know, this month I have to renew all of this. And this is once a month. This is almost a whole AVAX I'm spending here on the fee okay and that fee it is what it is you know you buy you spend about fifty dollars a month let's say okay uh but you're making back you know every day you're making let's say eight dollars so that's eight one sixty twenty uh right two hundred forty dollars a month you might be making uh you could spend you know 50 dollars out of that is what it is and this is at the low you know we're talking about a very low point right now it's six dollars it's gone up 11 percent, but it's not a, it's not a, a good time for this token it's going to go i feel back to maybe a hundred bucks and if it's a hundred bucks and i'm making a hundred bucks a day i can quit my day job because then i could just sit on my ass and play video games um and still pay my bills because i have other passive investments so that Thor for you in a nutshell, and there's other places like this, but Thor is working right now on on a on a video game, um, on, a, on a metaverse, and investing the money where it should be uh, back into you know into projects that are worth it. So I think that there's some room here. They do your own research. This is not financial advice. Let's move on to Mead. Oh man, I just lost the wallet. You know, what? I'll show you guys this quickly after mead um but i'll show you the difference between metamask and this is avax's wallet system it is so 
weird and a little complicated. Uh, if you're used to MetaMask, you're going to hate this wallet. But it is there, and if you're using the X chain like we spoke about before, it's really a great place to move money around. If you have another friend or family member that wants to get their AVAX practically free. So Mead is another project I'm in. I think we'll have to change to... No, I'm in here. Uh, Mead is a funny little gamified thing. Uh, it took a real dump lately. I bought it in. I bought it in about not too long ago, maybe a two dollars or so. Uh, no, even cheaper than that. I think I got it for a dollar fifty. But look how it's just been sliding down, and this is because of the market. You know, there's nothing to do but a market. It was at a dollar, and then it just went down. It was at four dollars, and it just. Uh, all right. I mean, it was started at ten. This was the launch. It was it's a new project, you know. And there's there is a there is something to be said about how a new project has a lot of hype at first. Then, as the devs are doing stuff and building in the background, it's silent and people are just impatient and they walk away from the project. They forget. And then after this, it's gonna go back up. Uh, and they haven't disappeared or anything. And if you got in for a pretty cheap number. You are what I call a value investor, which is what I am. Which means you're looking for a bargain and you're willing to be patient. That's what value investing is all about. Uh, and you get in a cheap, you wait, you hold, and then eventually we'll see what happens, right? Uh, this is their DAP, which is kind of cool. There's no more... Uh, can you buy? Yeah, you can buy. No, they, they, you can buy a brewery. Uh, they opened a few breweries still. They was they were locked for a while. Now they opened them back up. Um, your your brewery is about 125 mead. So what's that like 84 dollars? I, I guess a brewery. You buy the brewery, then you you know you ha I'm earning three dollars a day for my two breweries here. If the money if if it was making more than if it was more than 68 cents, I would be making a lot more here. Uh, five meat a day times five dollars, I'd be making 25 bucks a day, for example. And this is just in the background, you know, my claim tax is high right now. Uh, this is just brewing meat in the background, and then I could sell the meat for AVAX right here. You know, if I, in fact, if they might not even have it here. In order to get this, you, you need in, in order to buy a brewery, you'll have to buy mead from Trader Joe. Um, which is going to be, no, it's a little slow, but it's going to tell you that you're importing a coin that they've never heard of before. Give it a second, let it kick in. This is, it is imported, yes. As long as it comes from their website, it's okay. And then, oh, I think you can only buy it in USDC. You cannot buy mead in... You cannot buy mead in um, any other currency. You can't buy it in AVAX. Although that's really strange. There's just no liquidity for that. So um, you can Maybe maybe they changed that. It's been a it's been a few. I don't. I still don't think you could. But I'll say. Let's say they they open the liquidity pool for AVAX now. It used to be just USDC. So while this is in the background, this is happening. Um, you can also buy home kit, which is much cheaper than than a than a brewery. Uh, what is that? Huh? It's more expensive. What's going on here? They changed some stuff around on me. A home kit is a hundred bucks, and a brewery is now eighty four dollars. That's changed. Okay, no biggie. Uh, my inventory is here. So how's this work, right? You have one brewery. Uh, each brewery is. Um, Oh, this one's fermented. Okay, so while we're here, we might as well claim. The fermentation process is about 14 days. Every 14 days, it's going to uh, it's going to allow you to claim. The claim I have there, I can claim my, my tokens right now. And what's going to happen is my fermenting process will restart. And I'll have, I have to wait another 14 days to claim. I'll also get some XP. Once this XP goes up to... I. To 1.2 million, I'm going to be able to turn it into a tier two brewery uh, for free. I believe there's no cost to that. So 
that means from a two me today, I'll be brewing three me today. So when the price goes up on this thing, potentially, you know, we can have six me today instead of five. And, you know, uh, let's let's claim and see what happens. So where's my XP? 126.639. If I claim, I have to pay something, of course, but not much. It's also like, what is that? 0 0.014. Um, I, I can't do the math, but it's nothing. It's like a, a fraction of a dollar, I believe. Okay, let's let me get my ledger going here. Very, very important that you have a ledger with this stuff. If you can, you should get it. It's worth it. Or get the, 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 the other the other kind of... There's several different hardware wallets. Just don't leave home with it. All right, next. And, okay, agreed. Yes, last transaction, accepted. Okay, transaction sent. Now, I want to see my XP go up, and I know there's going to be meat here on the other side. We just have to wait a few seconds. Maybe refresh. Ah, so there's my XP going up. Now I'm at 13%. See, if I would have left it alone and not, claimed i believe my xp was going up as we were talking you know i'm gonna let that happen next time just because i'd rather get the xp versus the few 14 need that i got just now just you know there's not much money there so uh and this one's gonna be in you know in six days i can i can uh, i'm gonna leave it alone i'm gonna try to get it to a tier three brewery so there is a marketplace you could buy breweries that are already either ready or, or uh, um, sometimes they have ways to add stuff to breweries like uh, the store allows you to buy um, reinforced vats to add 5% production rate. It's gamified. It's, it's, not, so, it's not so boring as, as Thor, but Thor is working on a new UI. You can decrease the fermentation period. Um, there's even colors. Sometimes you can they have giveaways on their Discord where they they give you a different color, or like a fairy, like a green brewery or something. You can resell that in the market for more. So it tells you right here the floor price for one tier brew, tier one brewery is about 140 mead. Tier two brewery. Oh, somebody made made a mistake here. Now, if you wanted to swipe this right here for the price of a tier one brewery, you can go ahead and do that. For less than <laughs> what's that? That's a good price right there. Maybe I'm gonna do this. As a matter of fact, if you guys don't, what's that? Sixty-eight cents times one forty. It's about ninety-five dollars for that tier two. They used to be much more expensive. Um, and then we have a tier three. I think the, there's no more tiers than a tier three. A tier three is three hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, a tier three is gonna get you six meat a day. Ah, here's your. You see the evil brewery. It's a rare brewery. This is the color, I believe. It's a color structure, and they're, they're you know, these are all over the place. But six hundred, six hundred meat is a lot to pay, versus the tier two, which I got. I also got my tier two for a pretty good price. That's why I bought it. Um, it's just interesting how they gamified the whole thing. And there's other stuff they're working on as well. It's really early in this project. It's uh, it's been only out, like I said, it's just in March. <laughs> it just came out, um, and uh, and then the, it looks like it might it might work out if if people don't flee because of the price, which it went down tremendously. But like I said, you know, we all see the market. The market's bare, so that's what it is. Um, one more thing, let's talk about the Avax wallet. Now, you guys don't need this. MetaMask works fine. This is just for those hardcore techies that want to be able to use all three chains and and uh, and so. So let's see if I can get uh, into my ledger wallet here. So this is your this is your UI. This is your user interface for. Uh, for for AVAX's wallet, okay. Now, they have th this is 
It shows a few things. There's interesting stuff here. Here's your X chain wallet address. Here's your P chain wallet address to receive staking rewards and cross chain transfers. Okay, this is for uh, to receive funds. The X chain wallet. Your address will change after every deposit. You can keep using previous addresses, thankfully, but for safety reasons, they give you a burner every single time you make a deposit. Now, C is your C chain. Use it to interact with the Ethereum virtual machine. They they make it clear, right? But at the same time, it's it's a lot of stuff you don't necessarily need to function in the AVAX system. That's why if you guys want to keep it simple, uh, you want your MetaMask and keep MetaMask handy because this this stuff is just extra, mad extra. Uh, here's your cross chaining. If you wanted to send tokens between chains, uh, you know you can do that as well. Uh, I haven't found a use case specifically for this for myself, but oh, I'm I, there we go. So if you have money in the in MetaMask, you send it from your C chain, right? You'll send you'll send from MetaMask. Let's say send this to your C chain here, okay? And then once you get it to the C chain, I'm not gonna send it, but you could see it. Oops, that was a mistake. This is the address here. You would copy that. Make sure you send it EV. You send it to the, only the C chain. Okay, and then we'd send the max AVAX and then boom, you'll find the AVAX here. Once you've got it there and you wanted to send it to the X chain to save on costs and to be fast or to send, then you know you're going to send it to somewhere else who is also using this wallet. That's what you would do. You would you would then transfer from C to X and then make sure, you know, that the person you're sending it to is gives you an X address. And you see how... The X address does have an X in the, f in the first. It's not a zero X, but the EV, the Ethereum has a zero X. That's how you know it's an Ethereum address versus an X chain address. X chain is always going to have an X in front. And the P chain address is always going to have a P in front. So that's just a little bit of uh, details for you, minutia. Cannot stress um, how important that it is that you make sure what chain you're sending things on before you send it do not send an erc20 on the x chain i've lost money this way uh i believe not much but i have lost money doing this because i didn't understand it entirely before i sent it uh impulse control will get you really really far with uh with crypto in general um and then you can also validate and delegate here. If you had 25 AVAX, you can help to uh, you want you can help delegate. You but you you know you'd go to someone else's node. If you have 2,000 AVAX, you can be a validator. But the same thing. So that's that proof of proof of stake. Like I said, the uh, the proof of stake system uh, where you could be a miner and collect your money. Um, you need the same thing on Ethereum, I think, layer two. You need a certain amount of Ethereum. I think it's 2,000, 2,500, something like that, in order to be a validator and, and, and help the network along. Uh, there's other stuff here, but again, I mean, it's not stuff that you'd particularly be interested in, or I don't even know what you would do here, to be honest. Oh, collectibles. Okay, so this is your NFT studio, I right, assume. So um all right that's it let's wrap it up i guess uh let's give the floor over to any questions maybe do we have any questions i just wanted to make one last quick point um actually i'll give a wrap up in a second but can you go back to trader joe real quick just for everybody sure. trader joe is is pretty much uniswap think of it as 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 the decentralized exchange just built on avalanche uniswap is a decentralized exchange where i can swap out my Ethereum for any other token, or I can create a liquidity pool. I can pair two different cryptos into one category and earn a little bit of passive income by letting people swap between those two that I've chosen. If you've ever set up an LP on Ethereum before uh, using Uniswap, you pay a one-time gas fee 
uh, you you spend like ten bucks to just interact, to connect your wallet as an initialization kind of thing. But then you're gonna spend about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars just to set up the LP to start. Uh, setting up an LP on Avalanche is super cheaper. So if you're interested in doing a long-term passive income play by setting up an LP or by contributing to an LP, you're going to want to do it on, in my opinion, you're going to want to do it on a non, you're not going to want to use Ethereum in my, in my opinion, especially if you're setting up, say, for example, an exotic token. Uh, an exotic ERC-20, maybe one that's created by an NFT project or one that is brand new and nobody's ever used before. I know the guy that set up the first LP for ApeCoin did really, really, really well until recently. When the price drops, you end up losing out lots of value and there's something called impermanent loss as well. We'll cover in another class. But... Um, in creating, you know, it, long story short, Trader Joe is just a decentralized exchange for you to swap out all of your tokens within the Avalanche system. Does anybody else have any questions you want to post in chat? Or uh, we're talking about LP token on Trader Joe. But where's the best place to just stake AVAX and receive AVAX rewards? You're going to want to use. Um, the the p chain there and del and become a delegator um which means you don't actually own uh the node you're not actually a, a validator you're not actually owning that node um but you're helping support another node um or if you want there are a bunch of different other um DeFi protocols that allow you to stake your avax and receive a small passive income Yield Let's Yak say yield. is one of probably yeah. the most popular one. You would stake, you'd get some Yak, and then you can stake your Yak here, and you'd get your 17%, for example. Right now, these are auto-compounding. Um, but that's just one of many, that's one of many, many places you can spend looking at, uh, you know, you can look, if you're trying, trying to chase high yield, just, you know, be careful. Don't go into any, any place. Uh, coins are, they come, they go. But some places are very stable. Yield Yak is one of those places. But there are coins, that, even on Yield Yak, that you want to avoid. Like, here's UST. You know, you did potentially don't want to be on the wrong side of this when it when it, de when it, when it was depegged, you know? Um, so, validation is probably, like Sean said, the safest place. All right, so if we have, um, let's check these questions again. Um, yeah, class started at 5 um, today, 5 p.m. PST. Um, we do have another class tomorrow featuring Hobby from Valorize DAO, who's going to give a dev's perspective on Bitcoin, going to do a deep dive into Bitcoin um, beyond just the average uh, person's knowledge about it, um, give an actual dev's perspective. We're going to be creating our own wallets. We're creating our own mnemonic phrase, our own seed, seed phrases. Um, Really kind of cool stuff. He's going to be talking about the double spend problem um, that Satoshi had to really work with. Um, take me out of the running. I don't have time to bandwidth to study one more token. LOL. All right. Um, but yeah, there's, uh, there's lots of different options when it comes to uh, different tokens we can invest in. I do want to just give before we do the giveaway... I do just want to give a, a quick kind of OG opinion. Um, this is just an opinion. Um, I, I know Happy is very bullish on, on AVAX. Um, I personally come from um, looking at things in a macro narrative. And I will tell you that during 2017's bull run, 
everybody wanted to be the next Bitcoin. Who's going to be the Bitcoin killer? You know, Eric Voorhees came out with Bitcoin Cash. Oh, we changed block sizes. Yay. Bitcoin is the new Bitcoin. You missed out on, on, on the Bitcoin run. Well, now you can get in on Bitcoin Cash. There was Litecoin with the ever suspicious Charlie Lee, um, who sold out his entire position at the top and has never reinvested. Um, and Litecoin was supposed to be faster than Bitcoin, so it's better than Bitcoin. So, ba 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 ba. Yes, again, Tahiti is right here. Bitcoin didn't go anywhere. It wasn't ever killed. There was no Bitcoin killer. Right now, during this most recent bull run, I have seen that there has been the narrative of who's going to be the Ethereum killer and which layer one solution is going to end up dethroning Ethereum. I do not believe personally, just like with 2017 and Bitcoin, that any layer one will defeat Ethereum. There is a chance, a small chance, that Binance, in my opinion, um, will compete market cap-wise. But as far as use cases, hype, um, just overall volume on the network, I think you know Ethereum has made itself to be very, the very clear winner already. I say that as a caveat so that people don't just automatically go and try to find the next Ethereum killer. Um, that being said, there are a lot of opportunities that we've just gone through with some of them for you to be investing in smaller market cap layer ones that have a higher, that have a more room to grow. So if, you know, things yep. turn back around and the bull market starts back up, there's more room for Avalanche to grow than there would be for Ethereum to grow just based on market cap sizes. Again, what Crypto Ralphie was talking about a couple weeks ago. All right, so I just want to make that very sure, or very, very clear to everybody. Um, yeah, you do get a receipt for staking. Happy Meal makes a good point. You get a receipt for staking, and it's in the form of an LP token. So you get like a little token um, that shows that you've combined two things in an LP pool, and that you can then use that token, and you can stake that token. Um, to gain even more passive income. All right, but I will yeah. uh, right now, just for the sake of time, uh, just because we're 20 minutes over, I want to respect everybody's time. I will go ahead and run the random number giveaway. And we'll see uh, who's got their AVAX C chain in their Meta MetaMask wallet. You can't hear anything, Tahiti? Oh, no. All right, let me run this. Hold on one second. Random number between 1 and 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Vatarax. Vatarax, uh, we're actually, you know what? I'm gonna do two. Rolling again. Vatarax, congrats, you've just won a little bit of AVAX. Uh, please DM me your Avalanche OX from your MetaMask. And the second winner is Vatarax again? No. Sorry, Vatarax, can't wait twice. <laughs> Let's try that again. Tahiti. Tahiti, the second place winner. Tahiti, please send me your uh, C chain MetaMask address. Uh, go ahead and DM that to me. I'll get that over to you by the end of the night. And I will be giving a third. Uh, NFT Duke, the giveaway is based on if you added um, Avalanche C's chain to your MetaMask wallet. I will be doing a third Avalanche giveaway for the winner of the Kahoot this week. Uh, I will post the Kahoot right now into our events. And you can all go check that out.
It's the same address as your MetaMask wallet. Yep, exactly. It's the OX. Yes, sir. That's going to be on the C chain because it's an OX. If it was on the P chain, it'd have a P in the front. If it was on the X chain, it'd have an X in the front. But it's EVM compatible, so it's got an OX in the front. And when I send it to you, you know, you just switch your uh, network over to Avalanche and you'll be able to see what I send you. And I'm not so sending you a thousand. I'm not sending you a thousand AVAX. <laughs> <laughs> Was the second winner Tahiti? Is that correct? Correct. So we've got Tahiti. Okay, perfect. And Vatarax. And Vandrax. Vatarax. NFT Duke, I just want you to know, um, you will be receiving XP for uh, the class as well, so don't worry about that. Um, and as far as the giveaway giveaway went, uh, it was for the people who were here uh, creating the wallets. So the uh, the time was wrong on Twitter, so NFT Duke uh, came in a little bit late. All right. Um, can I get a, a general consensus in the chat? I just want your guys' feedback. Is Avalanche too confusing? Is there too much going on? Is it similar to your experiences in Ethereum? How do you feel about the Avalanche chain um, or network, uh, the three chain system? Um, and how do you feel that um, tonight's class went? Do you think you learned something? Do you think you'll be exploring this ecosystem? Or is this all too much for you and uh, you'd prefer to just stick with the high gas fees on Ethereum? Hmm. Let me know what you think. When Avalanche first came out, I had was told by um, someone much smarter than me that I should invest. And I think the price was around like $6 at the time. And... Uh, Nice, Tahiti. You'll be able to actually uh, enter the ecosystem now without any risk. Just use what, uh, what you get tonight. Maybe go buy an NFT. Um, well, the markets are down. But yeah, I personally, just to let you guys know, um, was too confused when I first heard about Avalanche. Uh, I had not known enough about um, crypto itself. Um, you didn't have enough to stake at the time. So uh, Yield Yak, you can stake as um, much or as little as you want. To become a validator on the P-Chain, um, you will need to have a certain amount. 25 tokens. Yeah. Is it 25? It's 25. To be a part of the validator or to be a node, to be a node in and of itself, it's 2,000. The minimum minimum is twenty five, yeah. And just as a fun little thing, just to let you guys know, um, Avalanche was actually originally created anonymously, just like Bitcoin. We don't know who Satoshi is, which I might actually give a class on who Satoshi is because I think I know. Um, oh, yeah, I've done some some research, and if you've been following my TikTok, I presented my evidence, and I believe I have honed it down to who it is but I might give a class on that uh, later this week but um, long story short uh, Avalanche was originally created uh, anonymously and, and the name that the team chose um, anonymously you guys ready for this was Team Rocket as in Pokemon's Team Rocket blasting off again <laughs> I thought that was very silly <laughs> but yeah yeah, prepare for trouble and make it double. <laughs> Jesse, James, and me out. All right. Well, I really, really appreciate you giving us all this information, all the different dApps and everything that are on AVAX um, or on Avalanche, um, their native currency of AVAX, uh, how cheap their gas is, the three chain system. I'm going to go ahead and post that uh, Kahoot challenge. 
again, it will only be first place that gets the um, giveaway. And that is up. You guys can go ahead and uh, give me some emojis on that. React to that a little bit. Let me know you're going to be doing it. That Kahoot will close Friday at midnight. And tomorrow night, we will be doing a Bitcoin giveaway. Be giving away a little bit of Bitcoin um, for participation in tomorrow night's class featuring Javier from Valorize DAO. If you have any other questions, feel free to post in class chat and I will make sure um, to send Vatarax and Tahiti their giveaways. Tahiti, I have not received any friend requests from you. All right, everybody, have a great night.